Hey, what up, Rick Sega Radio? The Culture's Economist is back with another great episode. Today, we're going to be talking a lot more about real estate, um, young millennials, and Gen Z, and you know what does it look like right now as we, um, as the largest group of uh, first-time home buyers, are really striving to get into the housing market. So, um, we got some really cool content, and you know we're going to get right into it. Last week. Bloomberg released an article where they took data from Zillow and reported on the top 10 cities for singles to actually move to for when it comes to affordability. Uh, right now, we're seeing record increases in rent across the country. And, you know, these are things that people uh, like myself and the millennial and Gen Z groups, um, the largest cohort of first time home buyers, these are things that we think about. And, you know, so we wanted to talk today about. Um, just those 10 top 10 cities. Uh, Number one, you got Wichita, Kansas. Uh, the typical rent out there is about $966 a month. That's kind of insane. Like um, they're actually the only city on the top 10 list that doesn't have a price over $1,000 a month. Number two is Austin, Texas. Um, typical rent out there is $1,869, um, but I, I guess there's a lot of new and exciting things going out in Austin that that kind of contribute to that. A lot of Silicon Valley tech companies moved and relocated to the Austin area. Um, Snapchat, I think even Amazon and um, a lot of other notable names, um, they're, they're moving out there. So Austin's got its own thing going on. And um, yeah, you got Milwaukee, Wisconsin um, at 11.86 a month. You got Denver, Colorado at uh, 19.88, just about $2,000 a month. And then you got uh, San Antonio, Texas at just around uh, 14.69. So um, something that I found to be really cool was the fact that Houston is actually number six. And if you go down further, you'll see Dallas at seven, so on and so forth. Um, you got three, four Texas cities um, on this top 10 uh, singles list uh, for when it comes to you know moving for affordability or renting for affordability. Um, that definitely so that's impacted my life and my decision to uh, leave the DC metro area because DC I mean DC is down at the bottom of the list but you know um, you know if I could go up that's what that's the best move so yeah I mean in the top seven you'll find four Texas cities so that's really cool um, I love that aspect and you know uh, this goes into a this could go into a, a deeper conversation on this reverse migration that we're seeing for uh, not just millennials but um, African Americans really and that's a whole different conversation. But Coming in at the number eight spot, we have Seattle, Washington. So I mean, folks have known that you know the Seattle area in the in recent years has had a lot of trouble with affordable housing, and they have you know managed to you know secure that number eight spot on the top 10 list for affordability for singles and their rents about uh 22.65 a month uh in the nine spot like i mentioned dc's at the bottom we got in dc at number nine um shout out to dmv again always gotta show y'all love when i'm on here um but yeah 22.30 and then you got boston massachusetts at 27.88 a month so um i i know friends personally that you know moved um after you know getting their degrees in the dc area um they, they took their talents to Boston or they took their talents to like uh, Atlanta or Georgia, um, North Carolinas. But, you know, a lot of love is being shown in the Texas area. So I, I look forward to see what happens in the in the Texas real estate marketplace. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So it's really important to keep in mind, you know, as millennials, as we're growing, we're young, we're enjoying life. But we should really work it hard and paying attention to the world around us. Um, as a matter of fact, here in the United States, rent prices are actually rising four times um, faster than income. And, you know, you know, it makes sense for people. Like I said, in my situation, folks that just got their degrees in, you know, uh, higher rent areas to relocate. It makes sense for us to, like, you know, move where, you know, your housing dollars stretch and, um, you know, when they stretch further, those are that's definitely more appealing to a single person. Um, young professional people that just got out of school. The U.S. Um, renters report reported that 51% of U.S. renters are single and have never married. So, you know, I think this kind of information is relevant. You know, you want to be economically sound. That's what we're want. This is what we want to be known for. You know, we're talking about you know good decisions for singles to make in the economy, and it's not all about like you know talking about relationships and stuff like that. You know, we're not a relationship podcast. We want to be known for. Um, you know, educating and building um, economically sound adults, you know, young adults, and, you know, let's contribute that to society. Um, 
So like I mentioned, like rents are rising in the fastest pace in decades and nationally, um, the national rents uh, rose a record 11.3% last year and 2022's uh, first few months actually maintained that double digit jumps in the in rent prices. So it's, it's really important, like I said, as we plan our lives, as we're in these uh, pivotal moments, um, we, we think about these decisions prior to just moving. Um, you know, look at the look at the job market in that city and in, in the near metro area, um, and you know, just study and do your due diligence prior to making these big jumps. So, like I mentioned, we have historic increases in rent prices across the nation, and right now we're going to talk about some of the top metro areas that haven't seen the highest and most dynamic increases in rent prices over the pandemic period. Um, number one on that list is you got is the uh, Naples, Marco Island, Florida area. And Florida real estate um, across the board has seen a lot of crazy rent and, uh, rent jumps. Um, the Naples, Florida area, uh, you're paying on average close to 2,000 bucks, 1991 a month. Um, but the crazy part about Naples is that since the pandemic, the increase in rent has been 39%. So you're paying significant, that's a significant chunk out of your income. Um, especially if you're a single that wanted to live out there. And if you're, if you wanted to be in Tampa, um, you know, Tampa has seen a 29% increase in rent and folks out there are paying on average 1600, uh, 1620 a month. We've seen jumps, um, in cities like in the in metro areas like Las Vegas, uh, Phoenix, um, even your Jacksonville's and Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, all of these cities have experienced increases in rent of um, exceeding 23%. Um, the Washington Post reported on this, you know, we see a lot of people moving to Atlanta, Georgia, um, Savannah, Georgia, as a matter of fact, that metro area has rents of around 1370 a month, um, and they've seen 20%, 24% increase as well. So um, these are some dynamic things that we're seeing across the country. And what we're going to do is take a deep dive into a few reasons why your rent might be increasing. So the number one reason we're going to get right into when it comes to why you're probably paying a lot more for your rent is simply because demand is booming right now. Demand for real estate and real property rentals, it's been booming throughout the pandemic. And, you know, we our economy here in the U.S. has experienced a lot of constraints on supply chain when it comes to the real estate industry and several industries, period. Um, you know, the pandemic, while it saw booming demand, you know, we saw also and continue to still see a shortage of materials and workers in these industries. So so also contributing to the demand boom is the fact that more and more people are coming of age, particularly in the millennial and Gen Z populations, to where they, you know, wanted to live on their own. And, you know, households have been splitting into new households um, just from the coming of age of an entire generation. So, you know, the Washington Post even reports that with all of these supply chain shortages, a lot of people um, in the construction industry have faced delays. These things have all impacted businesses and enterprise across the nation. Um, the number of U.S. households grew um, by 1.4 million, uh, nearly 1.5 million actually, um, last year according to the census data. So a lot more people actually branched out to live on their own. And I'm one of them. Shout out to H-Town for giving us a shot might see these things happen in your local area is because we're currently in a really pricey and competitive um, housing market. Again, we said that there's a large demand for property throughout the, um, the country. And, you know, a lot of would be home buyers, folks who have the incomes to purchase um, home and make those significant investments, um, they're locked out uh, of the housing market. And now they've um, defaulted to becoming renters again. And, you know, with that comes increased uh, demand to the rental sector and increased prices as a result. The Washington Post also reported that with the expiration of rent freezes and other measures that the government deployed to assist renters during the early stages of the pandemic, um, now that these things have worn off, um, the effects are starting to take place and take hold in the rental market. So these are another reason why you might see your rents increasing in your local areas and fact, generally more wealthy renters. People who have higher incomes are now renting. And, you know, that's, again, due to the um, inability for the supply to meet the demand of today's market here in the U.S. So, um, you know, in the state of Texas, for example, um, 20, 28% of all single family homes have actually been purchased by institutional investors. So it's not only our, you know, folks um, 
becoming more wealthy and renting and, and renting, but institutional um, investors are purchasing a lot of property. It's nearly one in three properties, um, one in 10 properties. So, you know, we got to think about these things again, when you're making your moves, making your decisions and um, don't only worry about being a consumer, you know, real estate is a dual natured good. Um, it's for consumption for you to lay your head in and have a place for shelter and protection. But it's also for it's also an investment, you know, so think about um, the local market areas and, you know, continue to tap into Risk Taker Radio to learn a lot more about what's going on here, because we're going to be talking a lot about real estate, technology, um, you know, black manhood. These are things I want to be known for um, and love to have y'all continue to follow along on the journey. So. Texas isn't the only state that's seen an influx of, you know, institutional investors in the single family housing market. And, um, you know, the national average was actually about 13 percent. So in the state of Texas, uh, that's more than double the rate that we're actually seeing institutional investors purchase property. So nationally, it's more like one out of 10 properties are being purchased by an institutional investor. But again, I, th I do really believe that. You know, it's important for us as millennials, Gen Z, future, um, you know, home buyers, period, um, and, and people that desire to be in these markets. We should become, uh, you know, financially sound, you know, and, you know, make sure that we're studying up on opportunities for us to get a foot in the investor world. Because I think that over the next five to 10 years, you know, that national 10 percent might might end up looking more like what we see in Texas today. Um, at 30 percent so or near 30 percent so you know let's not just be consumers again like I mentioned real estate is a dual natured good so let's make some investments as well um, and I think that you know the average consumer um, if they start to adopt more of an investor mindset will be better off in these situations um, and in the markets of the future all right, Risk Radio, so I appreciate you guys tuning in again. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video with a friend, share it with a millennial, share it with someone in Gen Z. Let's start to teach each other, empower each other with this information and make decisions that turn us from consumers into investors. Um, stay tuned for the next episode. Follow me on all social platforms. And <laughs> follow me on all social platforms and, you know, we'll follow this journey together. Smash it. Smack, smash. Smash. 